Now, even after we have uh, uh, figured out what are the phonemes and the morphemes within a speech stream, we still have to then match those speech units to meaning. Uh, and this is a process that we typically refer to as lexical processing. And see, this also can be fraught with ambiguity um, for a, a number of reasons. First, um, there are words that sound exactly the same, but mean different things. And these are known as homophones. Uh, I'm showing a couple examples um, here. Um, you know, eight and eight, a whole and whole, sun, sun, here, here. Um, uh, so in this case, right, if you're thinking that all that you have is an auditory message, you have to somehow infer which of these spellings and therefore meanings the speaker is referring to. Similarly, there also are homographs. So these are words that are actually spelled the same, but have different meanings or multiple um, meanings. Uh, you know, bow, for example, or fine or row. And so the problem, of course, is that different meanings essentially are competing um, in, you know, as you develop an interpretation of what is being, of what the, the message, um, uh, of what the message means. Uh, and so there has to be a way to disambiguate this. And of course, context seems to be the most important uh, way of disambiguating. Now, uh, Swinney, um, in fact, was particularly interested in whether this was the case and whether context was actually entirely blocked out alternative meanings. Um, so what he did is uh, the following. He had people do, uh, he, he exposed people to sentences that had in them uh, ambiguous words. For example, the sentence, the garden was filled with spiders and other bugs. Now bugs obviously can have two interpretation either uh, the animals or a spying device. And so in order to, to understand whether people were accessing both meanings of the word bug or only one given the context, um, what they did is at the same time as people were listening to these sentences, they were also performing a lexical decision task. Now you'll remember we've already covered this task, but in short, you're shown a string of, of letters on the screen and as quickly and accurately as possible, you have to decide if it's a meaningful word or a non-word. Um, and of course, the interesting, um, uh, the interesting aspect of this task if that, is that if there's any priming going on, you will be faster at responding to a word that is primed. And so in this particular context, the way they did it, that sometimes the word they'd be deciding on is a neutral word, a word that is disconnected from the particular sentence. Other times it's the primary meaning or the context appropriate meaning rather. So the word ant, you'd expect ant to be primed by bugs. Um, and then the question is, well, the word spy, which would be primed by the, the alternative um, the, the, the other, um, the, con the non-context appropriate uh, interpretation of bugs, is that getting primed, meaning is, is that meaning also being uh, processed? <clears throat> and so if you look at the word uh, spy, um, people take 960 milliseconds, which kind of works as a reference frame. When they hear the sentence and at the same time, they have to take a decision about the word and then they're much faster. It takes them 890 milliseconds compared to 960. And this is exactly the effect we know of the lexical decision task. They're being primed by the context appropriate meaning of the word bugs. And so they're faster when they respond to ants. The question, as I was saying is, do they get primed in this condition? Do they get, they get primed by the alternative and non-context appropriate uh, meaning of the word bugs? <clears throat> Turns out, yes. So as you are reading a sentence, both meanings, or sorry, as you're hearing a sentence, both meanings uh, of the words are available to you. Interestingly, if the task happened even just 200 milliseconds after 
the presentation of the word bugs, then this, this, this effect went away, meaning the, dom, the, the context appropriate meaning would, re, would remain primed, but the, the context non appropriate meaning, uh, meaning now was as slow as the unrelated meaning. And of course, the, the, the implication being that at first you're accessing both the meanings of the word bugs and then quickly, presumably thanks to the context, the, 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 the non-required meaning gets sort of pushed away and now only the, the context appropriate meaning remains available to you for interpretation of what is being said.